Hello and welcome to the Healthy Nurse Connection. Thank you for joining me today. Today, I am so excited. We are talking with badass nurse Jana Alley, who is a real nurse's nurse. If she were to find you passed out in the street, she would literally stop what she's doing, save your life, and then move on with her day. So today, I'm excited to have her on the show. We are talking about a serious topic, though, of workplace violence. Jana herself has experienced, like most many, many nurses, if not all nurses, have experience in their career. And so today we are talking about bringing up awareness around workplace violence. And then if you have experienced it yourself, how do you move past it? So thank you for joining me and let's get started. Hi, and welcome to the Healthy Nurse Connection, where we are building connections to improve the health and wellness of nurses. I'm Leslie Catalano, your host, and I hope you enjoy today's show. Thank you. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Healthy Nurse Connection, where we are making connections to improve the health and wellness of nurses. Today, I have a very exciting guest. I have Jana Alla with me. I um, met her uh, a couple of weeks ago on a LinkedIn uh, past the mic event. And I thought her story was just really relevant to what's going on um, in healthcare today. And so I brought her on to kind of talk about it. Uh, I really want to get the point across that this is not something that just happens every once in a while, but really as a nurse, we experience this like almost day in and day out, just in small ways. This is her story is a little bit more intense, but we all experience this. And I, so I just wanted to bring this conversation and bring it more to light. So welcome, Jana. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you for having me. So I just want to start because I always like to ask our, de- our guests, especially if they're nurses, why you even got into nursing. So what is your nursing story and what is your why for why you even got into this career? Awesome. Thank you. So I originally was a journalist before I became a nurse and um, decided later on once I had my kids that uh, honestly kind of a worked out for schedule and money, went to nursing school, ended up falling in love with nursing, ended up getting in there thinking this was going to be a job change and a career change, but realized this was my calling. I was was born to be a nurse, Um, went to nursing school in Seattle, the Seattle area, Went to a great nursing school with a great experience, uh, got hired in my preceptorship in a job that um, was incredible. But I quickly learned once I got into the nursing field that um, I always said my goal was uh, that I wanted to change people's lives in nursing. But as I started nursing, the more I got into it, I realized that really nursing changes your life. It's the patients that change your life. And I look back and think of I've watched, you know, older people, a husband hold his wife's hand while she dies at the bedside or um, learned a lot of lessons from that, seeing that love and just felt so honored to be a part of that moment in their life. And, or when they come in and they're really sick and they're scared and you get to be with them and they tell you about their life because you're with them day in and out. And they teach you so many things that I've carried on is over the years, I just, I fell in love with nursing because not only do we get to help others, but those others truly change our life. And that has been why I've stayed in nursing. I should say through all of this is just, it's an honor. It's an honor and a privilege to be a nurse. And I, every day, I'm just thankful that I made that choice to go to nursing school. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I feel like we all have go into nursing because we want to help people and make a difference. Once we get into it, though, it is kind of a reality check because everything that we think this glamorous nursing life is, is not always so glamorous. There's a lot of challenges involved with it. And so when I met you, you were telling a story, the uh, event we were on was about workplace violence, and you have quite an experience as a trauma nurse um, dealing with workplace violence and like violent patients. So I just want to give you the space to kind of tell us your story and how it has affected your path in nursing and like, and then what are you doing now? So unfortunately that story that I told was not, that was just the final episode of violence for me. That was by far, not even the first, not even close. Um, 
I had been a nurse for maybe five weeks when I had my first assault. I had a patient wrap, uh, get my stethoscope. I was young. I didn't know not to wear it around my neck. And they were um, an alcohol withdrawal patient. And they, out of fear, whatever it was, wrapped my stethoscope around my neck and um, assaulted me in that way. It was incredibly scary. And being a brand new nurse, and I didn't know any better. I didn't know not to stand that close to a patient. I didn't know, don't wear your stethoscope. But that was that was number one. It's handled a little bit differently back then. Uh, she did go to jail right outside of getting better. And I actually carried a lot of guilt about that. I felt awful. Like, here I am supposed to be helping these people. She and not her right mind assaults me and my hospital at the time, you know, pushed me to press charges. And I did. And uh, I still carry a little bit of guilt about it. But at the same time, where's the line with that? Do Where do we allow that? OK, sure, she was not OK, but when is it, when do we say, okay, you, it's okay. She was not okay to, she gets to lay her hands on a patient or, or assault a, a nurse. Um, yeah. So she, where does that guilt come from? Like what, what are, do you feel guilty about? Her, you know, she was sick. She was sick and she was in the hospital to get better, not on her own accord. Her family had brought her in, uh, but she did harm me badly. I still, I had strangulation marks on my neck for my stethoscope and I, I, it hurt. I remember afterwards looking at it and thinking, gosh, that, that hurt a lot more than I imagined that would. But I, as a nurse, you're, you kind of, you're trained in nursing school. You're trained to help people. This is a calling, but also you go through years of training and intense training that, and that's what we do. When people look at the nursing profession, we're there to help people. We're, as they put it a few years ago, a phrase I honestly can't stand anymore, we're your heroes, right? When you are at your sickest, we're there to help you. And honestly, I got, I got caught up in that. I, I think as nurses, sometimes we lose in our identity as a nurse, the identity that we're still a person, that we still have every basic right to protection, that just because you're sick and you're not well does not mean that we have to give up our rights against being protected and feeling safe. And I learned that as I've gone through my career and there have been multiple other times that I've been kicked, spit on. Um, prior to this assault a couple years back, we were helping a patient who had come in on substance abuse and um, kicked me in the face while we were inserting an IV. We had Multiple people holding him down at the bedside, kicked me in my face, I had to go through a CT scanner and um, honestly, thinking back, the majority of times I've had to go through a CT scanner have not been for my own health reasons. They've been because I've been hit by a patient or assaulted oh by gosh. a patient. Yeah. And that's not a story that's just for me. That's a very right. common story. There are multiple people in the ERs that it, I've worked in that I've watched my coworker have her head bashed in on the side of a bed rail by a patient Gosh. and I go in to help her and I get beat up because you're going to help your coworker. Right. These are stories that are happening everywhere all day across every, in every hospital, especially ERs and psych settings in the United States. My story is not different. I'm just the one telling it uh, right. because I am out of the hospital. Now I do know I no longer work bedside. And honestly, when I got assaulted this last time, I remember coming out of the room, another, my coworker had come in to try to help me. She and I were both screaming and for help. It took so long for help to get there. And when they finally came and we were able to break free, I came running out of the room. My lip was busted. It was bleeding. I was hurting. And I just started crying and I wasn't crying out of hurt or fear. I was crying because I was so angry. Yeah, I'll never forget that feeling of how angry I was because it once again had happened. I had right. once again been assaulted by a patient in a short staff setting making, I was a staff job, so I wasn't making travel money. And that was another thing. It was just everything that's happened over the past few years in nursing. Here I am 
getting assaulted at my job yet again, knowing that I'm going to have to go through the CT scanner, fill out the paperwork. I have a busted lip, you know, do I have anything else? I actually can't fill the top of my gum anymore at all. And I go, what, what am I doing? Right. <laughs> what, what are we doing? And my coworker was hurt, felt bad for her. And it was at that moment that the anger, um, it really overtook me. And I knew yeah. that day that I said, I cannot do this anymore. I cannot yeah. do this anymore. And the guilt comes with that too. Um, he did go to jail and part of, and I, once again, I felt guilty. Uh, I did go into counseling after all of this happened and I had to seek help. And when I got into counseling and I started talking about why do I feel guilty? And she said, it's the same reason that women who, or, or men, anybody who lives in an abusive relationship, when you're in something like that and you feel guilty or, you know, you're taught through de-escalation training and how can we make it better for the patients? What are we doing as nurses to make things better for the patients? Are we in a relationship or a situationship in your workplace where it's created an, a mentality for victim abuse? Are the hospitals abusing the nurses? Are we creating an environment of abuse where sure you got beat and you got punched, but you know, you're a nurse. We're going to make this, we're going to, we're going to give you some health care. Just remember you have a job when nobody else has a job and this is your duty. And, um, did you do the de-escalation training? What, what could you have done better? So it's almost like a victim blaming. It is it very, and as a nurse, I had to, I still fight those feelings. I still go, I don't want to say, I don't think what could I have done better? I did. There was nothing I could have done better. Um, what I could have done better is got out a long time ago. I tell myself that sometimes, but I couldn't, I couldn't this. I love this job. I love this profession. I love my other nurses, but at what point do we have to look at the situation that we're living in, that we're working in? And we have to look at the people that are making the decisions that guide us in the hospital and what are their motives and what are our motives? Um, and sadly, a lot of people can't just walk away. I had an opportunity to go to a much better job. Um, but I understand that I'm a single mom with kids. I, I have to provide. And that's the same for so many people in my position. So many people saying nurses are leaving the bedside in droves. And it's true. They very much are. They're finding other positions. They're going to travel jobs. They're at a hospital for three months and you don't like it. You move to the next one. Right. That's not a possibility for somebody like me. Right. And for quite a few people. So the question comes down to for me and how my journey in getting better, I had to decide, am I going to take a risk and leave? And I did. And as I've gotten out, I miss bedside every single day. I miss my patients. I miss my, my nurses. I miss the camaraderie. I miss walking into a situation and having all of this experience and skills and knowledge that I've gained over the years and being able to use it, but also teach other nurses. That was my passion was for teaching new nurses. I miss it every, it's in my soul. It's, and actually feels like a heartbreak every day. However, when my kids came to me a few months ago and said, mom, are you ever going to go back to nursing and kind of hurt my ears? I said, why do you want me to? And they said, no, please don't ever go back because you're so much happier now. You're so much better. And while I thought that would make me feel good, it didn't because you know what? The first thing that came up to me in my mind was for how long have my kids seen me unhappy? How long have my kids seen me come home scared? How long have my kids worried about me? And especially when they knew I came home with a busted lip and I had to, they had to ask what happened. They they're scared and they're nervous. So um, those things weigh on me and I know that they weigh on other nurses and through this journey of healing, um, I sought help. I went to my primary doctor, told him what was going on. He um, asked me to not return to the hospital and I got another hospital job for a little while in another town, which was ended up being fantastic. Uh, had a lot of support there. And then 
I got into industry, which is what I'm in now. I am a clinical director for a medical device company. I very much use my nursing skills every single day. I just cannot touch patients. I have no yeah. direct patient care whatsoever. And while I'm very happy and I very much love my job and I'm healing, I do miss it. Yeah. And, um, but I have, a, I have found other outlets that have helped as far as making this better. And I've realized now my, my now goal is to help bring awareness to what's going on as far as the violence in the nursing community, violence in the hospitals and stepping into a realm of deciding that my future will most likely be in getting involved in federal lobbying positions for making sure that nurses are brought to the forefront of healthcare and made to realize that if a hospital is going to have the same standards, that the same standards that hospitals have for taking care of patients, those same standards need to apply for taking care of their nurses. Yeah. That's very, uh, very inspiring because I have thought about, you know, my, cause I'm not at the bedside right now either in my exit from the bedside also came with the question, like my family versus my job, mm-hmm. which is, it's, I think it's sad to me. And it's like, I'm getting emotional just thinking about it, but like that we even have to make the decision, like, are we going to work in a hospital where it's long hours, you come home, you're stressed you don't have any like emotional empathy left for your family because you gave it all to your job. And so you have to like make that decision, like my job for nursing, which you love or my family who need you, like they need you to to be there emotionally for them every day. And it's hard to make that decision. Absolutely. It, it's a terrible feeling when you're choosing between what you exactly what you love and not to mention this was such a huge what made me realize that I had to go was I and I I'm in debt as far as money wise to be in this job I, I I'm in debt as a nurse I chose a profession that I went in debt to I come into the profession to help others I have to pay outrageous amounts for my health insurance um our pay is not great where I am in Florida, it's we're one of the lower average states for nursing pay. And I hear lately that now they're talking about in hospitals rolling out self-defense courses for nurses. <laughs> I think I'm in a job that I'm in debt, that I pay outrageous, mediocre health insurance. I am getting beat up at work and now they want me to take a self-defense course. Yeah. Um, no. No, that's not acceptable to me. And somehow it's been eked across nursing that this is acceptable. Right. That sure, sure. And I'm all about metal detectors. That's great. Awesome. But the guy who assaulted me sure didn't use a gun or any part of metal. He used his hands. Yeah. And that's the story for a lot of people. Yes, we do need metal detectors in hospitals. Yes. But what we need even more than that is measures and standards to protect these nurses. And that comes with more security that comes with harsher standards for the victims that do it, that they, they serve jail time. They go in a registry, just like you would a sex offender. If that, if you step into a hospital and you have a history of assaulting a healthcare worker, you fall into a registry so that we're aware that you come in you, you have tried to harm a healthcare worker who has tried to help you yeah. We are innocent. in the fact that you came in and asked for our help and you assaulted us, therefore we should have forewarning that you have stepped into an arena with your past so that we can be prepared. And yeah. not only that, I think we need to incentivize hospitals or penalize hospitals the same way that CMS measures and, um, H caps and leapfrog scores that, for every nurse that gets assaulted in your hospital, you need to pay a fine. The hospital needs to be incentivized because when we think about it at the end of the day, no way, no matter how you look at it, hospitals are a business. Right. Hospitals operate on a business. And in order to really in, 
incite change inside these hospitals, we say, all right, you're going to treat your nurses the exact same way you treat your patients. And we're going to help you do that by enacting some measures and some goals and some nurse safety goals that will incentivize them to help nurses. And this is where my, because of all of this, and I don't wish any of this had happened to me, but I'm glad it happened to me in the fact that it has spurred a fire in my soul to make sure that I am stepping out and standing up for every nurse in this country, no matter what facet of nursing that you work in, my heart knows how you feel. My, I, I'm with you. I still stand with you. And while I'm not at the bedside nursing with you any longer, I promise you I'm going to fight for you. And I'm going to make sure that the day that I no longer work as an RN in any capacity, there will be some form of measure law policy that has been put in motion by the work that I'm going to put behind it to make sure that you and the future nurses in this country that come about are protected because we, we deserve it. And it took that last blow to the face for me to realize somebody has to stand up for the nurses because we're hurting. We're tired. We've gone through being your hero a few years ago, and now that those signs are dilapidated and falling Nasty. apart on campuses, you know, now we're we're your punching bag, right? And like we want to see real change. Like we have, we have to see real change. Yeah, we will we step to up see- to the plate every day as your heroes because that's what we do. But we need the support of the hospital to protect us and make sure that we have not only the resources. But just support from the hospital, because it's like, like you said, like you get a CT scan, which I'm sure the hospital hopefully covered. But then after that, they're like, well, you know, you're okay medically. Exactly. (laughs) You're fine. And I, I had to reach out for help from the hospital. And there was one person in leadership that I reached out to and she was very helpful and she, I laugh about this. Sometimes she got me in touch with somebody at the hospital who is a kind of a counselor for everybody. And I told him my story and what was going on. And he kind of cried into the past years of my nursing. When I was done, he said something that solidified me leaving. He said, you know what I think? And I said, no, (laughs) it's weird. He was quiet for a moment. He goes, I think it's time you take a break. And I thought, wait a second, this person that the hospital hired to listen to me is telling me I need to get out. <laughs> this, is, yeah. this is serious. This is serious stuff that somebody's going, I think that you need a break. I think you need to get out of nursing at the bedside for a while. I think you need, this is serious stuff. I think it's affected your life and um, you need to go. And another thing that I, I think is important for other nurses to hear, because this has been something that I have come to be able to talk about openly I feel that I was a good nurse. I have a lot of training and qualifications and I'm board certified, dual board certified. There were not a lot of situations that I couldn't walk in and nurse. And I always felt that I was the badass nurse. And I, I I was revered at that sometimes, but I would get in my car and cry because I was so miserable or I was scared to go into work every day, or I didn't want to go to work because I had a lot of anxiety all of that created a lot of anxiety. And I know that there are other nurses out there who may hear this, that people look at you and they think you're a great nurse and you are, that's it. You are, you're a fantastic nurse and they come to you and they rely on you. And that was my situation, but they didn't know that inside I was dying. I was miserable. I was having panic attacks. I was not wanting to get out of the bed in the morning and come to my job. But when I did, I came in, I put the smile on my face and I didn't ask for help and I didn't want to ask for help because then you're the weak nurse. Then you're, then you feel like that's what people think about you. We need to stop doing that. Or you're like the complainer. If you're trying to like fix something, you're, you're the complainer. You're You're supposed to go in and do your job and go home. And pretend like, you know, nothing's happened, but the truth is there, I will never forget the first baby that I saw come in dead, you know, years ago, or how many times we've coded somebody's child and you can hear that mother scream or how many traumas that come in and the way 
you know, you look and think, why did they even bring this in? Because they're basically decapitated or you, you, these things stay in your head and yeah. this is not normal. And right. we have to stop treating it like, yes, we get used to it. Yes. We, we build the filter. Yes. It's, we've learned to deal with it, but that does not make it normal. Right. And that does not make it okay that we go in and put a, a face on and then go out. What I've learned is that you can be the best nurse and walk in a situation and yet get in your car and let it all come out because at that whole time you were terrified. You were just yeah. going about it and you were terrified, but that does not make you any less of a good nurse right. that in fact makes you a better nurse. And we need to start recognizing that, that it is okay to cry at work when it's, when you're done with that trauma or you've coded that child and you've heard that mother scream. Cause we told them that their three month old is dead. It is okay to cry and go in a room with your coworkers and cry it out. Yeah. It's okay. We need it to do okay. that. We have to do that. Yeah. And we have to make that normal. And I, and I love how some hospitals, they say, okay, well, we're going to debrief this. And right. it's like a five second all right. Um, so what happened? And there's like a form sheet that we fill out and it's very sterile because that's what the hospital is required. And it's more like, what could we have done to prevent this? Right. So it's not even right. like, how are you feeling in this moment? And mm. it's like, well, how could we have fixed this? So then you just feel like crap because you're like, right. well, I thought I did everything that I should in the moment, right. but it's, now you're telling me the- maybe I did it. We have to check the boxes for the hospital. Yeah. We, we got to check that box. Did we do this? Did the charge nurse have a debrief? It's never, hey guys, that was really bad. Um, who needs a timeout? Or, right. And having the leaders that will step up and say, I, I'm hurting from this. I need to step away. I need to cry this out. I'm going to come back and talk to you guys. Or I need a moment to process this. Who needs a moment? Right. Normalizing that this is not okay. Or... I'm speaking from an ER trauma perspective, but I have worked ICU. I've worked med surge. I've worked PCU. It is just as bad. Yeah. On those floors. It is. And they, they, their patient load and their ratios are outrageous and they have to deal with so many family members and issues. And they also deal with all the horrible things of that come and they, every aspect of nursing where you are handling patient care, no matter what, you're hurting. There are times that you're hurting and you're struggling and or you have that guilt that you just didn't do the best you could because you're in a situation where you don't have the capacity to do your best. Yeah. So you, you don't walk away that. every day not feeling like you missed something or you know like you don't know if your patient's okay because you didn't have time to really go back and fully assess the situation. Right. Like, Absolutely. So you just pray that everybody makes it to the next morning. <laughs> Right. And that's heavy on you. And we can't do those things. And it weighs with us every single day. And then you come to work and you get hit by a patient. Yeah. All of that. That's what happened with me. And all of it came to a bubble and I couldn't do it anymore. And the normalization, I, this didn't quite hit me how like our responses to things are different until that football player last year you know, they're doing compressions on the field and that football player and everybody was like shocked by it and like, right. couldn't get past <laughs> it. And in my head, I'm like, well, what's the big deal? <laughs> exactly. That's just a normal day at work for us. And people are talking about it. And that was big in the nursing community. I remember when the nurses were like, wait a second, you know, we do this every day. And, and like, there is no like shocking for me because no. it was, and like, maybe this isn't a normal response. I mean, like it's a healthcare response, but like, right. but I mean, I was like, cause for me, it was like, you see football players get injured all the time and they have to go out the field. Like, how is this any different? But it's like, well, absolutely. He was it's dead no and they were doing compressions. That's how it was different. But in my mind still, I like, it's like, it's normal to me in my mind, even though it's like not normal. Does that exactly? Oh, a hundred percent. It's it's funny. You mentioned that a, a couple years ago, I went to go run on the beach and, um, I was going on a five mile run. I come down to the beach, happened to see a bunch of my coworkers there and we're all just chatting. They were hanging out. I was going to run. And a few minutes later, we see this people screaming, my coworkers go down to the water, pull out a girl who was 15. She had drowned. She was dead. She was dead. We started CPR and my coworkers together, we were all on the trauma team together. We basically ran a code, got her back 
she lived, oh, survived. My gosh. I went and ran my five miles. They still did <laughs> their thing. And then we all met up later for dinner that night. And it was just like, wow, you know, everybody else was appalled, but they went about their business. I went about mine because this is what we do. We are, yeah. if you are out and about and you are lucky to be next to a nurse when something goes down, right? we are going to put every effort in to save your life, whether we're at work or whether we're out with our family. And that alone should bring up a point that we need to be respected more. Yeah. The fact that not only are we going to save your life, if you come to our place of work, whether you're on an airplane, Hey, is there anybody who's in healthcare that can come help us? We are there to save your life. We're there to help, help you in the situations when your health is failing. We should have a lot more respect yeah. not only in the hospital, but outside of the hospital because we have been trained to give you the best possible care that you need when your life is in danger in any situation. Absolutely. And that's what we're yeah. going to do. I don't know a yeah. single nurse that it was sometimes we joke about it. Oh, I'm off duty. I'm off duty. But right. I can tell you right now that if there's a situation that requires our nursing skill and help, you're going to see a nurse run to it first. Yeah. That's what we're trained to do. And most often than not, I would say that's what we want to do. Right. We want to help you. We want to serve you, whether it's at our job or whether it's in the community. And the fact that nurses are leaving bedside, like myself, it breaks my heart. It it breaks my heart. This world, this country needs us more than anything now. You need nurses that are passionate, that are on fire to help the lives um, and the healthcare, the health of others more than anything. We need that. And we need to, there's so many things that we need to address, obviously on past right. Mike, there was talking about nursing compensation, but we have to look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs and safety being one of the main things Big thing. in order to get to self-actualization before we can address anything else. We have to make it safe for nurses to come to work. Yeah. Cause I mean, we safety, safety is the number one thing for patients. So like you're saying, that needs to be the number one thing for nurses, Absolutely. 100 or pinch. And like, uh, their psychological health too, like is part of that, like Absolutely. making it safe. Like when we experience traumatic events, which we do almost daily, taking the time to really let nurses feel that. And in, instead of just pushing it down, it's like, Absolutely. we're really good at just pushing it down. And then Absolutely. we get to the point where we can't handle it anymore. Exactly. And there are so many ways that we can go about doing that. And I, as I move forward in this endeavor to try to create a better world for nurses, I, I want to see hospitals put in um, counselors and social workers, specifically unit specific yeah. to go in and address these types of things. Because right now I think, I don't know, I, some of my, I, I didn't even know we had somebody we could go to at my last yeah. hospital. They're just like, Oh, well, let me let you talk to this person. Or sometimes it's just the old charge nurse that's been there forever that you go and vent to. And it's just, so oh, right. A hug and send you on, but we need actual trained counselors and professionals. professionals to come in that you feel safe that after you've coded that three month old or, you know, even any, any situation, I don't want to say just that you've had a bad day and you've got things going on at home. You need to be able to have somebody when you have, when your work is demanding that much that you can go to them and have an outlet and have resources to say, listen, let me, let me give you these resources. Let me get you set up with this person. You may need to get on medicine. Let's get you set up with a doctor. Let's get some, let's rearrange your schedule so that you get some days off. Somebody that's going to advocate for you mentally so that you can show up to work and give your best at work, but also at home. And that's where hospitals need to take a step back and realize that, you know, I know that we're a cost center and that we are, we affect the bottom line of a profit in a hospital. But when you get down to it and nurses are calling out and they're leaving at the bedside in droves, we're going to have to address this and hiring somebody. And these are creating a, a position for somebody like that is going to essentially keep your workforce in place, create right. a safer space, a healthier doing these workforce, healthier work, work environment. And I know we all joke pizza, but I'm going to tell you right now, it's not pizza. We all know that. <laughs> It's We're not little pizza. notes. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's meaningful change means coming out of the pocket. 
Yeah. And it's, we're going to have to dig deep in some of these pockets in healthcare in order to incite some meaningful change. And um, I don't, there's multiple ways that it can be done. I just would love to see hospitals do it upon their own accord rather than being forced at a federal level, which if things don't change quickly, that's what's going to happen. Right. So for the bedside nurse now who, you know, like federal change takes a heck of a lot of time and this culture change for hospitals is going to take time. So what would you say to the bedside nurse now? Like, what can they do? Not only for their safety, but like, what advice do you have for them? Oh boy. I hope nobody in the C-suite or administration is listening to me. But um, (laughs) So I, I cannot begin to stress to tell you that first and foremost, you come first. It is your health. You come first. And if you need to go to your hospital and you need some time off, I I highly encourage you to do that. You've got to take time for yourself. And there are a lot of people worried about what the hospital administration or leadership is going to say, oh, we need you on the schedule. There are resources out there legally that you can look into that protect you, that protect your job and protect your standing. And you need to reach out and find if you're unable to take the time off that you need or get the resources, there are legal things that you can do um, that you can look into to do that. But also I know that we're in hospital, money is always an issue. And what I did was I also got with the financial advisor, made sure that my money was situated when I did a job switch and found out that there were so many incentives for nurses. There are so many programs for nurses and things that can help you out financially and breaks and kind of ease that financial burden. If you decide that you need to take some time off, you you just can't pick up that fourth overtime shift anymore. Um, those are things that are helpful. Being honest with your primary care provider or even... Um, nurse practitioner, whoever you see, just letting them know that you're struggling. If you need medication, I, I, I don't, I used to be very against medication. I'm not, I don't feel that way now. Whatever you need to do to get your mental standing, that is first and foremost, the number one thing that you can do is you have to get yourself in check and whatever you need to cut out of your life that needs to be cut out in order to get your mental, that's what you have to do. Once you have your mental in check, or if you feel that's okay, I highly encourage people to get involved with your professional boards and nursing boards, ENA, ANA, go to conferences. Your hospital has money that will send you to conferences and pay for things. Get your board certifications, CEN for me, TCRN, CCRN, your hospital will pay for those things. Not only does this make you stronger in your profession, when you do decide you want to move up or out of nursing, these things are imperative. You need to get that education and that knowledge behind you. Become, even though it's a struggle when you you hate going to work every day, it doesn't change the fact that nursing is nursing and you need to work on your craft. You need to, you need to have more knowledge because you're not always going to be at that job. You're always going to have opportunities available to you. So go back and get your bachelor's, go get your master's, go get your certifications and always work on the art of nursing. Your hospital will never be able to take away the fact that you have a nursing degree and you are a registered nurse. Keep working on your craft, building your craft, make that your own personal part of your life to make yourself better as a nurse and, and and get involved in the, when you have a, a meeting for your chapter, if it's around, get involved because if we're not becoming part of our professional organizations, they in turn lobby for us. They go and do federal standings with other um, nurses that are do what I want to do as far as lobbying. They go to fight for us. And so when you're paying that annual membership, you're paying people to go fight for you and make better standards and do better education support you as the nurse. Um, Highly, highly encourage people to exercise, eat right, make time for yourself. The hospital, however many days you work at that hospital, get in the mindset that when you clock in, that's when you, you stay at your job. And when you hit that clock out, you leave that job. And I know that that's incredibly hard to do, but when you get involved in other hobbies, you get involved with other nurses like myself who have 
realize that there is a life <laughs> outside of um, those three days of torture at the bedside, it, it becomes okay. It, it does become manageable. And if you are at a hospital, this is probably the biggest point. And if you're able to, and I understand that financial constraints play a big part. However, there are other hospitals. There are other avenues outside of bedside. There are multiple jobs that you can do as a registered nurse. And it's scary. And all we've known is bedside and you don't want to step out. But I cannot begin to reiterate now that I've stepped out. A lot of the industry world, corporate world is realizing the value of a nurse. I know that there are places like GE and Disney and Amazon and Walmart. They hire nurses because of our skill level is so high because we're so competent and able to do so many different things that they're starting to realize, wait a second, they're so unhappy at this job, but they have all these skills. We can bring them over here, keep them happy, pay them a living wage, and they're going to be able to take on more jobs because they're used to that. Um, I am a living example of that. And I've worked in a very healthy work setting now in a company that very much respects me. And when I come to a conference center or come to a room and I speak, everybody listens because they value me as a nurse. And there are so many places out there that are going to do the same for you. So if you are in an unhealthy work setting, if your hospital is not supporting you, if you do not feel safe, get that resume ready, start working on that resume, get involved in LinkedIn. I got involved in LinkedIn at the beginning of the year, and it's a fantastic platform for nurses to find support. It's where I found Leslie. It's where I found um, Spility Healthcare. It's where there have been multiple avenues for me to gain networking, support, and the resources I need in order to build opportunities for me as a registered nurse. So get involved with those things. Get involved in every aspect that you can as far as a registered nurse to find a job that suits your lifestyle for your family, for your mental health, for your financial needs. They, I promise you that they are out there. It is not always at the bedside. And if you want to stay bedside, if this is your goal and this is your dream, get involved. Step up in leadership. Step up in management. Be the one who stays at bedside, but reach out to other people for support like myself, like Leslie, who can get you the resources to keep you strong in your mental health, but also give you the resources to incite change at the bedside where you're working. Because we, I, my heart goes out to the most that everyone who's still at bedside. I want to make your life better. Leslie wants to make your life better. We want to see the change and we're out here saying, what can we do to help you? So there's always help. You just have to step outside and find it, but I promise you it's there. Yeah. Yes. I, I love everything that you just said, because you're not saying just quit and go find, go work at Disney as a caricature or whatever. Like you have a nursing degree. Don't ever, ever waste that. Because even if you have to step away from the bedside for whatever reason, there is another place for you to use that skill because there are just multiple, multiple ways to use it. So once you're a nurse, you will always be a nurse and you will always find a job. Um, like Janice said, if you love the bedside, make sure you set your life up so that you can sustain that for the long term. And that is the key, like self-care on your days off is extremely, extremely important. And if you get to the point where you just can't anymore, then set yourself up. Like Jana said, like do all those things to set yourself up so that you can find something outside the bedside that fits your life as well. And still helps you meet that need that you are helping. And you are, cause I think that's the baseline of all of us is that we want to help and we want to make a difference. And it's not always at the bedside. So you just have to find what really like brings that fire and passion inside of yourself. Yes, absolutely. And I'm here to tell you, I'm beyond honored that I am a nurse. I am, it has been the greatest adventure of my life. And it, I, I know this is just a tough time that we're all going through as nurses. And I do believe it will change in the future, but we all have to work together. We have to yes. come together as nurses and, and we have to make the enough. changes. I think we this, do. like, we have to be the ones to say it not, we're not going to let somebody else make those decisions for us. We have to be ones to say like, this is what we want to happen. Absolutely. We are an integral part. A hospital cannot function without nurses. 
you cannot, there is no capacity in any hospital that can function without nurses. And the same with industry, with, with products, you will never find a good um, industry product out there that does not have a nurse that is helping drive it. I do not, more and more I'm getting into this side of nursing, I'm realizing the power that we have as nurses and why it has been um, held down for so long or why it has not been brought out. I, I don't know the answer to that, but I believe it's maybe people do realize the power we have that we are worth so much more than what we're being paid. We are worth so much more than this shift work that hospitals throw us into, we are an invaluable part of the healthcare system in this, in this society. And when we start realizing that, I mean, I know we all realize that I shouldn't put it that way, but when we embrace that and we say, you know what, I am an invaluable part. Let's get together. Let's incite some change. Nursing is going to shift and it's going to be the greatest career that you could ever have. And I truly believe that. There's, there's yeah. nothing like a nurse. And I'm, I know that you're honored to be a nurse, Leslie. I'm honored to be a nurse and I'm happy being a nurse. And I, I want that for everyone. I want that yeah. for every single nursing nurse out there. Me too. Yes. Well, Jana, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this was a really great conversation. Uh, I hope you guys who are listening found extreme value in it and can take something away. And remember mm-hmm. like, If you do hear something that is really speaks to you, or just is really going to help you in your own career, share that with other people. I feel like spreading the messages is the way that we can really gain momentum and gain change as well. We have to be our own support system out there. So if you, if anything just grabs your heart, make sure you share that with somebody else, share that with another nurse. All right. Any last words, Jana, before we close out? Keep. (laughs) keep going guys. It's not the end. And, um, the best is yet to come. It is, is yet to come. And I support anyone. If anybody wants to reach out to me for advice, questions, or anything I can do to help make your journey as a nurse better, please feel free to reach out to me at any time. I'm, I'm more than willing and more than happy to help you. And thank great. you again, Leslie, for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah. You're it's welcome. Great. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Okay. And then I'm going to stop the recording.